delighted to say we can welcome into our studio the number one doubles pairing in the world, Martina Hingis and uh, Sonia Mirza. And through to the quarterfinals today. So congratulations. Thank you. So Thank how you. are you enjoying Wimbledon so far? Really good. It's always good when you're winning, right? So I uh, know we're happy to come through. We had a tougher match today and uh, yeah, we're looking forward to our next match where um, it's our second slam together. So we're looking forward to our second quarterfinal. Just the second slam together. That's incredible. So uh, how come the pairing has come together so quickly? Well, we, I think we know each other from the, the tournaments like quite well. We even played against each other in singles. So it's like 10 years back. And uh, no, I think uh, the first idea was also because we both uh, play doubles only and it's our priority so maybe with our partners uh, the the things didn't go as expected and uh, first time we talked around Dubai and uh, two weeks later uh, we came uh, to play together in Indian Wells in Miami and we won a hat trick so that was pretty good. <laughs> yeah and of course for a lot of Brits here in Great Britain they have so much pressure and expectation you've seen all the papers sort of uh, following Andy Murray and of course Heather Watts as well but for you Sanya massive following in India so how do you cope with all that pressure I think a billion followers you have in Well India? I don't know how to not play with pressure so like I mean I, I you know yeah. <laughs> she loves it actually. She loves it I'm sure you do. She I'm sure on it. <laughs> no I don't know about that but I mean I have no other choice really I mean you know, I've been the only one who's uh, who's made this breakthrough first in singles, and now obviously we've, we've been playing really good in doubles. And um, you know, we've always I've, I've been waiting for another girl to come, and I was like, well, I want to speak uh, to someone in my own language in the locker room too, you know. But um, unfortunately, it hasn't happened. So I've kind of de learned to deal with that pressure of every time that I step on the court, people expect me to win, and if I don't win, it's probably because I went out a week ago. You know, that's pro that's how they they make it sound like. So it's just it's just the way it is. I mean, I think Martina has dealt with pressure all her life, and everything that we've uh, you know we do or not do is scrutinized a lot, especially back home. Uh, um, you know, it's a you know as you know, cricket is the main sport there, tennis is in. But when they have this one person who's who's performing well, they people like like negativity. So sometimes it sells. I think so. You know, you just have to kind of keep your head down, try and keep you know focused, and try and win tennis matches I mean that's really what it is but that's perfect then because I mean what a perfect couple you are then because the pressure you <laughs> dealt with no but really because the pressure you dealt with as a 15 16 17 year old Martina was unbelievable and I don't think really I mean obviously you're the I think you're the youngest winner on pretty much anything you've won so it's perfect because very few players have felt the pressure that you two go through. Yeah, but on the other hand, I was very young when I went through it. So I felt like every time I go on court and play the semis or finals here at Wimbledon, well, if, if it doesn't happen this year, there's plenty of years to come. So I didn't feel it as much as maybe the opponents I was facing, like Jana Novotna mm -hmm. at that time in the finals. You know, maybe she was thinking, oh, it's my last chance, my last hope. And I felt like, oh, my career is going to last forever, <laughs> you know, well, when you're 17. It is. Or, yeah. <laughs> it is. Yeah. We've got some shots of you uh, winning here. Of course, you were wow. 17, were you, Martina? Yeah, 17 16. Or 16. The year of 17. Yeah. The year of 17. So here we are. So <laughs> how different so do you feel as a person now? <laughs> I'm not sure about that. <laughs> how <does> Martina, <laughs> end round. <laughs> How different do you feel now when you watch this footage of yourself? You must, but, I mean, life, you have had well, so only, many experiences. Yeah, it's you? funny enough because only lately I start watching some of the, you know, footage that you get to see on YouTube, which didn't exist back in the day, and now uh, you can scout on your opponents. And Jana, I played her a few times, and also the year after when she beat me, I mean, does that mean that uh, we teamed up in the doubles? And, um, you know, it was an amazing moment. But I think it, you don't even realize when it's happening yes, to you. It's like you're there and everybody's applauding. Um, I had one in Australian Open as well. And yeah, it's just like meant to be. And you're like, today I really digest it. <laughs> yeah, wonderful moment. And, uh... Jeez. So few people have had their a chance to hold on to this that. Is when you still had the color, <laughs> right? Like, what, was your <laughs> <laughs> what was your description no. of your double partner? She was cute. No. Yeah. And it was yeah. not a word. Yeah. Well, anyway, yeah. anyway, teenager, right? Yeah, yeah. teenager. Well, I, I don't mind like those big little round, yeah, right. yeah, little like round, little chubby, baby fat, face. right? Yeah. Cute. Uh, yeah. Now, both of you, as you said, Martina, have just decided to focus purely on the doubles. It, almost for you, it, it must feel like a sort of a second career for you. Martina. It's the third one already. I came back and. 
that's true, thing. Actually. <laughs> that's right, yeah. That's right. But I can't just get enough. You know? but, but you clearly also, just love playing tennis. And I love, love competing. First of all, I love play, uh, playing tennis. I love coming out here and, and play. And uh, also the other thing that we, which got me back was coaching and helping um, Anastasia Pavlichenkova yeah. like two years ago and, and Sabine Lisicki and watching them and actually playing and training them. You know, it was like, oh, maybe still I got game. Not in the singles, but in the doubles. Yeah. I could still hold my own. And uh, I was, oh, let's try. And uh, now I'm really happy. I, it's almost above my expectations. So we're now teaming up with Sanya and uh, having a chance to go for a title. Yeah, and what for you, Sanya? Why did you decide to sort of uh, you know, just solely concentrate on the doubles? Well, two years ago, I mean, I had my third surgery in a span of seven years. And, um, you know, I was... Uh, I was the top 30 in the world for a long period of my career when I was playing singles and then it's just surgery after surgery I was just like always on the comeback trail and it was so mm. difficult because I was about 60 in the world where I know I'm not supposed to be 60 yeah. in the world because I'm always coming back and you know you're playing all these matches and um, you know it's just you can't practice hard enough because you're scared you're going to get hurt again and then mm. when I had that third surgery I came back I was still ranked maybe about 60 or 70 in the world and I was just like what am I you know like I don't I don't feel like I should be 60, 70. Mm. I should be better. And mm -hmm. I, it was just so frustrating. And, you know, I f played uh, my last tournament, I think, in Brussels, maybe. And uh, I won three matches. And the next day I woke up and my knee was so big. Mm. And I was like, oh, my God, what am I doing? Like, I'm going to, you know, not be able to walk when I'm 40. So I'm like, you know, let me, let me, I, the option was to leave tennis or, you know, work and maybe, you know, get injured again, probably, yeah. you know, because it was just a matter of time because my body was just not coping. Or, uh, you know, play and try and change my goals and try and be number one in doubles. And, um, you know, that's what, that's what I tried to do. And so physically, so. what difference is there then to people at home who say, well, doubles is pretty, it's pretty, I mean, doubles is physical as well. But just, is it the, the difference that it's just a little bit smaller? Yeah. To cut? That makes all the difference? Well, I think me and Martina, I think we can both vouch this. We played singles and doubles. That was the problem. I mean, we played right. so many matches. Mm. And, you know, per week, you're playing about seven, eight matches minimum. Even right. if you're making semis in both or quarters in semis, it's just so much on your body over the years. And tennis is getting so much more physical every day. And it was just not possible anymore. More. And for me, I have a fragile body, unfortunately, and, you know, I, I had a couple of freak accidents. I had twisted my knee a couple of times, you know, had a really bad wrist, which took a really long time. So it was just my joints were not good. It was not that I was unfit. I wasn't tearing my muscle or anything, you know. It was just like my joints weren't happening. So I had to make that decision, and I love tennis too much to stop playing so soon. So, I, you know, I changed, tried to change my goals and, um, you know, got to number one this year, which was unbelievable for me. And uh, I was so... Indian player to do that. Yes. And uh, yeah, I was really, it, I'm privileged to, to be at that position today. And, uh, you know, I think Martina really did help me during that time, you know, those Thank three you. weeks. <laughs> <laughs> no, she did, because, I mean, there was moments when she's, when you've done it once, uh, you know, I, I kind of felt like she was also, like, she wanted it so much for me, too. Uh, and I felt that. I felt that energy. And I think she did help me a lot mentally. And we won three tournaments in a row. That's where we got to number one, uh, nice. you know, together and also me individually. So. so is Martina, are you the boss in this team? No. Yeah. Well, not always. <laughs> Who's the decision maker in terms of who serves first and who takes? Well, this is pretty given. I mean, our team. <laughs> so uh, that's. What like, are you talking yeah. about? She serves first. <laughs> but, you know, you our strength. She serves yeah, first. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I think you have to know. You have to be realistic. Yeah. This world. Right. Like yeah. you have to know your strengths and weaknesses, and I think this is uh, what we do best. And uh, when we perform at the best, there is only maybe two, three teams that can beat us when we do really play yeah. well. So. Uh, I think this is really important and in doubles also it's probably not as physical because you have to maybe play more precise yes. and uh, more strategic but also you would sometimes play every second ball it's not like yeah. you have to serve and un yeah. I even played like in Fed Cup now this year so there's no wow. place to hide in a single yeah. you have to actually play and run every single point <laughs> I think wow. this is the difference fantastic well we so appreciate you coming up to see us thank and you. you're into the quarterfinals very best of luck and thank I hope you. you come back and see us thanks, thanks guys thank, thank you very, very much thank you. good luck you guys